Oh, people, look at this. We got a new fancy intro. We got a new fancy page here with a picture of the iconic Crater Lake. We got a new fancy uh, navigational search function map thing. All for the brand new properties in the brand new state of Oregon, which we'll be offering today and every Friday all throughout the month of August. Welcome back, you extraordinary, extraordinary subscribers to this, the Hemingway Land YouTube channel, as we make our first foray into the Beaver State. The Beaver State. Don't blame me, guys. I didn't come up with the name. Whatever the case, uh, should be noted, guys, we get calls, emails all the time. Hey, Hemingway, when are you going to have properties in fill in the blank, such and such a state? And typically, the end of that sentence is Texas. We get a lot of requests for land in Texas, sometimes Montana, sometimes Florida. Never Delaware, though, guys. Never Delaware. Whatever the case, I would love to have, you know, 100 properties in every state. Regrettably, however, it's not quite as easy as buy the land, sell the land. Uh, I guess if I wanted to offer you guys absolutely no detail on the properties, the way that some people selling land online do, then it would be easier. If, however, you like to have working knowledge of things so you can explain things to buyers, uh, it helps first to understand zoning, some environmental codes, things like that. And then it helps as well to have a relationship with a photographer who's good, who can take the kind of photos you want, deliver them the way you want. helps to have a relationship with a title company, a title company who knows you and doesn't ask the same dumb questions every time you send them a deal, so on and so forth, guys. Point being, it takes a little effort to get started up in a state. And then we have to hope that Hemingway has chosen wisely and pick desirable properties that you guys are going to like, unlike, say, vacant land 20 minutes outside Winnemucca, Nevada, which apparently nobody wants. So reverse engineering, learning about the property in the region, then reverse engineering from what I think you guys are going to want. Example, not in an HOA, things like that. And then making offers in the region that are below market value and hoping that somebody's motivated to sell at those prices. There's a lot that goes into it. There's a lot that goes into it. So hopefully we've chosen wisely. Hopefully you guys like the properties we're going to debut today and throughout the month. Hopefully our Oregon properties perform like our New Mexico and Colorado properties and not so much like our Arizona and Nevada properties. This is not to say that I don't believe that Arizona and Nevada are desirable places. It just seems like I have not hit that sweet spot yet of properties that you guys are, you know, tripping over yourselves to buy. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, whatever the case should be noted, guys, we're going to be offering very affordable terms, aggressive terms on properties in Oregon. I'm trying to do that a little bit more on the website in general. Uh, but specifically, as a bit of a reward for you, our loyal, you know, we'll say fan base, we'll, we'll be charitable and say fan base, but the people who show up every week, subscribe to the email blast, subscribe to the YouTube channel, who are aware of these properties weeks and months before anybody else figures out we even have a website, uh, for you guys, affordable terms are being offered on these properties that we're debuting this month. Additionally, because some of these are a little rural, that we will say um, startup costs to develop the land might be such that uh, it would just be helpful. It would just be helpful to be paying for the land a little bit at a time while you are simultaneously developing the property. And thus, uh, affordable and aggressive terms will be offered. Blah, blah, blah. Anyway, with all that said, guys, let's get into uh, all the new properties going live this week in Klamath County. Take it away, video editor. Here we go. All right, people. Pictured in front of us is the state of Oregon. Down here in the south central part of the state, we have Klamath County. The major town, as well as the county seat out here, is Klamath Falls, which boasts a population of 22,000, not to mention one of these, one of these, and one of these which is how you know it's a happen in town. In addition, Klamath Lake is one of the major attractions in this region, and in the grand scheme of things, is none too far from the properties we'll be discussing today. Those properties, by the way, are located in the Klamath Falls Forest Estates, a massive subdivision occupying 10 units of land spread out over 40 miles north to south and occupying roughly all the land you see here. As I said, it is massive, guys. Whatever the case, our very first property is located in Unit 2 in the southwesternmost part of the subdivision closest to the aforementioned Klamath Falls. That property is this one, reference number KLOR1853, 2.3 acres priced at $15,000. And if we go back to the map, you'll see that this property sits just south of the Klamath Falls Lakeview Highway, aka the 140, in this developed region here. In fact, if we go to the photos, you will see that a number of very nice home sites have been developed within a block or two of the subject property, which is no doubt a product of the region being both close to the city as well as having utilities. 
Of course, what came first, the utilities or the desire to develop the land here, who's to say? I will, however, note that the presence of utilities is, from what I have seen, confined predominantly to this region of the sub, meaning they do not line every street, they do not touch every parcel, and for the most part, they do not exist in the other regions. Fortunately for you guys, they do exist here. Now, our subject property is located here along Brant Drive, just south of Possum Lane, and as you can see from the photos, is accessed off a decently maintained two-track gravel road and boasts power at the lot line. Now, it should be noted the nearest underground utility box is, according to our photographer, roughly about 500 feet away, servicing the nearby home site along Possum, but is likely a service which can very easily be extended out to the land. Additionally, in regards to the road, it's worth noting that between the highway and the property, most of these roads are either paved or well-maintained, and thus you can very easily access the land in any vehicle type. Now, as we go through the photos here, it's important to note that despite the development and respectable home site you see nearby, there is no HOA out here, and according to the county, there are no covenants or restrictions on file for this subdivision. And if you're doing any quick research or poking around online, you will find that both of those things are in existence elsewhere in the sub, most notably Unit 1, but both were created circa 2013 by the resident owners of that specific region. Point being, they do not exist here in Unit 2, which I believe makes the region even more desirable. Of course, what does exist here is formal zoning. Most of the subdivision is zoned R2. And as always, guys, if you come back here to the listing page, go to the property details section and click on the ambiguously titled Zoning and Restrictions tab, you will find this PDF, which will go into some detail on that topic. For the purposes of this video, however, I will shorthand it for you and simply say that acceptable structures in this region include mobile and modular homes. In addition, shockingly, per the local codes, structures only need to be a minimum of 300 square feet, which means that unlike many of the regions we have bought and sold land in, tiny homes are acceptable here. Seems probably an Oregon-specific thing and a nice feature of the state, or at the very least, this region. In addition, it should be noted that the subject property may be used for camping and RV living 21 days out of every six months. Uh, of course, an RV cannot be used as permanent living, but three weeks does seem like a pretty healthy chunk of time particularly if you are just passing through the region on some uh, seasonal camping trip or just getting out of the city for a few weeks in the summer. Now, one quick thing I learned about Oregon and its inclusion of tiny homes in the zoning code is that a tiny home with a trailer frame, meaning those not on a permanent foundation, is defined as a vehicle and needs to be registered with the state DMV, which I thought was pretty interesting. Maybe you agree, or maybe you're like, uh, you're too easily impressed, Hemingway. Whatever the case, I thought it was cool. I don't know. What do you want, people? Anyway, learn all about that and more on the listing page. And as mentioned earlier, guys, if this property is one that interests you, we are offering easy, oh my God, guys, so easy, easy financing on this one. It's a $15,000 cash price, but if you can't afford all that at once, it is a mere $5,000 down payment and then $350 a month in perpetuity for 36 months, or if you prefer, 12 months, same as cash. Next up, we venture north in the Klamath Falls Forest Estate Subdivision for our second property, reference number KLOR2915, this 9.6 acre lot priced at $15,000. Uh, Hemingway, if I could just jump in here for a second. Sure, guys, what's up? So the 2.3 acre property is the same price as the 9.6 acre property. What, uh, what's, what's the deal with that? Oh my God. What a bunch of Sharpies. Excellent question, guys. Well, you remember earlier when I said it's a massive subdivision covering roughly 40 miles of ground north to south? Well, the first property is over here in the southwest most part of the subdivision, closest to the city, easy to access, has utilities, so on and so forth. The second property, located way the hell up here, is almost the exact opposite. It is very far north. It is not close to the city at all. Access is off some forest roads, and the property has no utilities. And realistically, guys, it is so different. The developers actually gave this unit of the subdivision, the only one with 10-acre properties, a different unit name, which is the Sykin unit. And it is named the Sykin unit because, and here comes the major selling point, this property is surrounded by the Fremont Winema National Forest and sits in very close proximity to the Sykin River and its numerous tributaries. So despite the pricing being the same, and trust me, the comps bear me out on this, this is not necessarily a better or worse property, but just for a different type of buyer. And whereas our first one may have been for someone wanting a residential lot not too far from town, this second one 
is for someone who will say places a very high premium on their privacy and very likely wants a lot of land on which they can build a cabin or seasonal retreat from which they can take advantage of the numerous hunting and fishing opportunities afforded them in a region like this. Now, if we go to the map here, you will see first off, the subject property has legal access along both its north and southern boundaries. And while the plat identifies these as White Fur Lane and Blue Ash Road, respectively, different maps give these roads different names. Point being, guys, if you do want to take a drive out there to scout the land, it's best to download the Land ID mapping app first so you can get turn-by-turn -turn directions. This, of course, is especially true since you'll be driving through National Forest and using a lot of the forest roads, which is my way of saying may not be the most intuitive route. That's number one. Number two, if you look at the map here, you will see that the southern half of the property has a good amount of trees on it, whereas the northern half is pretty wide open. So as we go to the photos here, you can see the sort of towering aspens that make up the southern half and the cleared section that makes up the northern half. Next, when we go back to the map, you will notice what looks like a road cutting through the property here. This is not actually a road, but rather a hiking trail, which apparently was carved out by the state. Cuts through the property from east to west and divides the northern half from the southern half. And anyone purchasing this property should understand that this is the equivalent of a legal road going through the land. It's not a road. It's a hiking trail. But the point is that like a road, you cannot build over it or obstruct access to it. Now, realistically, how much foot traffic does this hiking trail get in a year? I have no idea. But being as the property is roughly 10 acres in size, I think your privacy will not be affected much by its presence. Next. If we go back to the map one last time, you will see that Merritt Creek runs through the land just south of the subject property. Now, mind you guys, this is a privately owned piece of land down here, one which does not appear occupied and one which I'd be surprised if the owners visited more than twice a year. Point being, easy access to fishing in a creek, just use your best judgment when doing so. Or if you prefer, guys, you can visit the aforementioned Sykin River, which is located just a few miles west of the subject property, and which is home to numerous rainbow, brook, and brown trout. And in case it needs to be said, guys, this property, much like the first property we discussed, has no HOA and no recorded covenants or restrictions. Additionally, guys, the zoning out here is R5, which is substantively about the same as R2, but just refers to a different amount of acreage. Point being, everything I said earlier applies here. Mobile and manufactured homes are acceptable, as well as tiny homes with a footprint no smaller than 300 square feet. And of course, camping and RV use is acceptable as well for 21 days every six months. And finally, guys, much like the first property, the cash price on this one is also 15000 and we are also offering easy finance. So easy, guys. It's so e It's so easy. Lionel Richie's going to go back, change the name of that song, call it Easy Like Hemingway Land. And if you're saying to yourself, hey, Hemingway, you've used that joke before, get some new material. I know, guys, but I like that joke. Whatever the case, this one is $19.99 down and $3.50 a month for 48 months or 12 months, same as cash. And as always, guys, our land contracts contain no prepayment penalties and only prepayment incentives. And if you elect to go this route, a copy of that contract you'll be asked to sign can be found right here. With all that said, going live on the website next week, we will be back in Klamath County, Oregon with another two new properties in another new subdivision. In the meantime, guys, have a great first week of August, and we will see you back here in our next video.